Hello again and what's up and we are back for another Wild Sovereign Raid Standard deck tech as we explore the new set in which uh, you can see already here the deck that I'm going to feature for this video which is the Simic or Blue Green Caps Ramp. So what does this do? So basically with the main concept of ramping spells you use uh, cards that can search the library for basic lands or other lands or in advance you can basically put them in the, the battlefield tap and tap or any other effect and then later on hard cast your big spells or those spells that has uh, a way to search for any uh, huge creatures out of your library and basically cheating them out into the battlefield but what this uh, feature would mean that the name of copies because we're not simply going to have to wrap up with creatures or hard cast them in a as we call that the typical way but we use uh, creatures that can also copies other creatures to gain pretty much a huge uh, advantage in our board so we're going to start with this list we have 19 creatures five battles uh, eight sorceries including three instants also as a cardinal spell the only counter spell in the deck with 25 lands uh, as our disposal so we're going to start here with why we call this one as a copy as the deck's uh, main strategy in which we're going to use the new card growth triplets so this card is a six to cast three three satir warrior that's uh, a trample that's quite uh, high cost at initial loop but if you read on this one when it enters the battlefield if it is a token you will create two tokens that are copies of it and also a bonus that when your triplets dies put a number of some counters equal to the power on each creature you control named Graph Triplets. So basically this can pump out your other tokens that are copies of Graph Triplets. At the same time, those other triggers would also uh, create multiples or uh, increasing multiples of person counters for each of those other tokens that will also die or place into a graveyard. So how do we get to benefit from this one? We use another card. Or it's basically use the copy effect that is the mirror hole mimic this is a spirit from crimson wall for to cast zero zero basically but it enters the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield except that it's spirit in addition to its other types so you can in a way copy growth triplets uh, have this one as another growth triplets per se since this is not a legendary creature so you can also uh, do a check that if it enters the battlefield it isn't a token so basically mirror hole mimic is not a token so this would also produce two copies that the, the enter the, the battlefield trigger would uh, satisfy and so you can have this advantage copying growth triplets by the mimic and at the same time you can also have this option wherein you can flip this one to another card from the back uh, this is uh, basically becomes a ghastly mimicry but you can cast it for its disturbed cost of five and you have this effect that this becomes an enchantment aura that that when you upkeep create a token that's a copy of enchanted creature except that it's a spirit in addition to its other types and then if the mimicry would be placed into exile or puts it a graveyard from anywhere it would be exiled instead so in a way this is just also another copy that can do some shenanigans as well as how you would set up your board but again going back with the main strategy here is that we can basically just copy growth triplets with her model mimic and do win from there so how do we also go beyond or not only going with that uh, strategy of copying creatures we have also options here in which uh, one other option here is to go hard cast with Atraxa grand unifier so this is now already a popular card in the domain ramp decks so we'll also apply it here in this build we also have uh, several ways to just go uh, plainly uh, stomping their opponent's board with copies of the pair stamper for example that's not the <laughs> intended fun but uh, you can have multiple copies of stomper here that also gets you to search for a basic land and then the only drawback here is that you cannot attack or block unless you control seven or more lands so with the text ramp strategy you can just uh, satisfy this uh, drawback as you cast more of your ramp spells so we have four copies of that it becomes a ramp in a threat the late game we also have uh, four copies of the new card that is uh, the bramble familiar so this one is a 
to to cast two two that can basically add green mana or you have also the option to pay two and tap discard a card return bramble's familiar with sword in hand but the good thing is that in the late game you can still go with the fetch quest that is an adventure sorcery in which the effect is uh, you will mill seven cards and then put a creature or enchantment or land card from the among the milled cards into the battlefield so this is also a way to cheat out your big creatures into the battlefield by using the adventure so early on you can just cast it for two you can ramp for your mana for example to use this one for a turn three invasion of Sedekar or any other four drops here or you can have your invasion cast uh, invasion by Korea and then later on you can just pay two and tap discard it to return from your hand to cast for a fetch quest adventure so in that effect we have the last copy that can also become a utility card in this deck is the Hullbreaker Horror. This is just a 7 to cost 7 8 that whenever you cast a spell, choose up to 1. You can bounce an island permanent or return target spell you don't control to any stone or sand. So imagine uh, having multiple copies of this. You can basically mirror hold this one, the Hullbreaker, and then cast a spell, and then you can have each of those uh, triggers happen, including the mirror or the a token that is a copy of that Hellbreaker Horror. So that is your options here along if you will not be able to have the main strategy going well you can have Hellbreaker Horror route to just basically outplay your opponent's board. Now for the choices for the battles in which we have uh, been able to see here not only the three copies of Invasion of Sendikar wherein you can search for up to two basic lands and then later on become Awaken Skyclave if uh, it was able to flip, it's also become a threat on your board. We also have uh, Invasion of Ikoria. So Invasion of Ikoria is also a ramp effect in a way that you can search for a uh, uh, non-human creature card. What's the good news is that equal to the mana cost that are pay for it, uh, the X mana or less, and then put it on the battlefield. So if you search the library this way, you can you will shuffle the library afterwards. And then if you're able to flip this one, it becomes also a very huge threat with the Lorta Apex of Ikoria. That is an 8-8, which for each non-human creature you control, you may have the creature assigned its combat damage as those were blocked. So this is sort of a thorn elemental effect that can basically uh, kill off uh, and can prevent the chump blocks for each of your non-human creatures that you are, you are attacking. So in this build, is basically going with uh, non-human creatures so these are dinosaurs a spirit this is a horror a satyr warrior an elemental raccoon and of course the prediction angel attracts uh. now for your sorceries is basically for the ramp support for the invasion of car we also have the new return to the wilds this is from the wilds will drain common card uh it's a three to cast sorcery that you can choose to uh, search library for a basic land and then put it on the field tap or you can create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token or create a full token so either two choices are to be made which makes this one a very good uh, spell that is suited for this deck so along with it also is herd migration this is also a, a useful component for the domain ramp deck so we are also about adapting that build here you can channel this one to search for a basic land all or going with the hard cast with the seven to cast creating uh, three three green best token for each of the basic land types among your control so you can have this here so have your basic land types I've, uh, considered adding a plains and a swamp so that we can in a way hard cast attracts if needed and last but not least for our sorceries is another sort of a tooth and nail effect that is the thunderous debut it says eight to cast uh, bargain so whenever it speaks of bargain here you may surprise an artifact enchantment or token as you cast this spell Look at the top 20 cards of library. So basically a huge chunk that's one third of your total uh, cards. You may reveal up to two creature cards from among them. So if this spell was bang bargained to put those cards that are revealed on the battlefield. So otherwise those are placed in your hand. So the next well way to set up this one is to have your token ready or any other way that you can have a uh, champion artifact available to the bargain for this card. So in a way, we can still have those with this deck. And the uh, last one of the list for the non lands are your instants. We have three eyes out to basically have a solid counter spell to help us out in this. But uh, as we go along with this build, I think we can do some minor adjustment of this. Maybe just cut out this one to the sideboard and do some any other needed uh, 
cards that will be more suited to be in the main deck. And we wrap up the, the 25 lands in this build. We have Bosiju for channel land effect and the utility card per se. Mana fix with Dreamer Cascade. Okay, some basic lands with five forests for islands. Otawara, the Soaring City for the blue channel land effect as a channel as a support card. One planes, three sparse quarters that then go with the three and then basic land the uh, uh, cycle in the mid to the late game. A copy of Swamp for Yamamaya Coast and one copy of the Magnificent Gardens, in which they can also become a copy of target and token artifact control with mana value X. You can also have uh, any support that can be needed and also become a mana fix per se in this setup. And for the tokens that we are going to use, it's just basically the beast token, the copy token, and uh, of course for the mana value, uh, average mana value of deck is surprisingly 2.53, and that is with lands and without lands that is 4.34. So given there have still a lot of hard cast here uh, for mana cost and the. Uh, those the, uh, cards that has X mana cost uh, in the build and uh, you can see here uh, we have uh, six spells with mana value three and four permanents we have seven permanents with mana value four and the rest are just going well with four mana for six I mean four permanents with mana value six we have seven mana value for three permanents in the deck and this mana value of two would also go with uh, some of these uh, adventure cards and also these uh, hard casted uh, creatures and uh, finally it's still 700 percent for green and 29 for blue with a splash of six each for white and black so i guess that's quite uh, uh contusion for our blue green c make uh, copies ramp this is not an awkward name for me for but you can still improve this later on as we go with the the core strategy of just copying uh creatures uh with the the card advantage is given with given the growth tick triplets and uh, the mirror horror mimic so we are planning to go with this uh, build let me know in the comments below what would you think what would be your other uh, suggestions as to this uh, deck would uh, suffice so, so that we can also improve this in the near future as we have this one played in the coming what's of the drain standard i guess that's about it guys for this deck deck we have uh, again semi copy shrap in your feature in this video don't forget to like subscribe so we can have more of this deck tech as a way of support for this channel and can also notify on for you can uh, basically the first one to be uh, informed once uh, new uploads are put or uploaded in our channel again guys thank you for watching this video and see you on the next one